spawning as the orange dark elves. This is none other than Wick. Going for a hunting cabin and probably triple wood. That's what pretty much everyone does. You got a guardian of Nor coming out on the other side. Playing as the orcs in the purple color. This is a Supremo. And he's going for the occultist. Classic matchup. Guardian of Nor is uh especially against orcs. Very much a must on this map, but I would say he is just generally superior to the others. Um, to the other option, the Reaper. In almost every single map, like okay, Great Keep Gardens. I could I could see you going for a Reaper because you have a very easy level five, uh, and you can definitely do a lot with Blood Shower and the and the other stuff. But Guardian Noor on every single map where you can't get an easy level 5 is a no-brainer. Uh, with the medium difficult level 5s as well, I would say. So you just tank so much of the damage, tanks his huge shield. For the skill picks, oh no way. No way. He's doing the tilt damage. Vic is so good at this, he, he sends that Spectre out and he does the mine invasion. Constantly slowing down this hero and over time costing him precious fucking time. Now, Esprimo has gone for Blood Sacrifice, Brute Force, Nullify, and Demonic Pact, and Blood Confluence. Lost a lot of health though already uh, to not having triggered. What? He didn't trigger Blood Confluence before? You're supposed to do that every time you can. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's very low health on the occultist for sure. Oh, jungle with the reaper. Yes, that too. But jungle is like an easy map for level 5. So, jungle and great keep, I would say. When do you guys think is the occultist worse than uh, than the goblin? Is it ever worse? Hey, Gecko! Thank you very much. Oh, that's a steal. Subscribed. Oh, wait, the AoE isn't actually gonna hit that? It's not gonna hit the undead. Oh no, Vic is getting to steal all that. So much XP for him. And he gets the flag reset, what? Oh no. That really sucks for us, Primo. See, on a small map like Ancient City, you really, really need to sort this out and get yourself as many sectors as possible. But it doesn't look like it's going to be the case here whatsoever. And the Guardian is getting a lot of hits in while the Occultist is fighting against the flag. The Guardian takes absolutely no damage. Okay, this time around the Occultist, however, uh, steals the flag. The Guardian doesn't have an ability that can hit the flag except Soul Explosion when you happen to be able to also hit an enemy nearby. Like now, it does bounce back to, to the flag. Occultist is having to go and buy some potions, but it can easily do that. Flag will be denied in the end, costing the Guardian a lot of time. He still hasn't been here. But... I think it's a good trade-off because Dark Elves can very easily upgrade their own flags, right? And even get another flag upgrade behind that to Frontier Outpost. Um, so totally no problem with that. He just got himself a flag. The stream is going to be here for a million years. And the problem is that next time the Guardian of Nord does a solo explosion, I think three of these gobbles will die. Okay, it's just two. Still a problem. 
the Occultist is getting weak. It is enfeebled, so it's doing significantly less damage. This is almost always up, like it's minus 16% the whole time. Vic is feeling confident enough to start the hunting cabin. He, he, he thinks it's gonna be completed, I guess. Oh, he's so close to getting the kill, but uh, Esprimo does pop the potion. So I guess not. How many potions does he have? Oh, two more. Okay, we'll be here, a we'll be here for a while. It's <laughs> gonna need to be more gobbles or something. There's six more. Now, Orc doesn't really want to do a lot of that in this phase of the game. Vic does have a lot of banking right now. Uh, these should all be Frontier Outposts when you have this much money. Okay, imagine if they were. Like, you could get started on uh, spiders and... It's doing some pretty good spider harassment already. But you can get started on spiders infiltrators. So while Vic is doing a lot of damage here, uh, he is not completely playing in his top shape just yet. Neither is Esprimo. He says said in the chat a moment ago that he's taken a two week week uh, two week break before this. But yeah, good flag fights from both players. Wait, Vic still didn't upgrade. Uh, he's going straight tier 2? What? No, oh, pain. Alright. I, I guess you could go Beetle here. Uh, but is he going to go just Sleepers? I guess Sleeper might be good as well. Uh, especially if you can harass early on. While the iron is not yet ready to go. Getting himself a bunch of MPs. I wonder what the plan is long term. Can't really say at this stage. Uh, but Rick did spend all his food. Town hall almost done though. There go the frontier posts. They're all done now. Except this. This is a really good base, by the way, to put your farms early, or uh, you can also put your production here because it's close to the Medusa base, which is always heavily contested. We're gonna see a Medusa steal. Where is this Primo, anyway? Did he go home to... No, be stealing Medusa. So he's a little bit faster on that. Very good work. Should get level 4 from this. Wait, was that an iron mine? Yep. It's Primo is tier 2. And he's rapidly upgrading these these bases with iron ba iron miners in them. Should be getting a ton of that going right now. He's he's played pretty much tall this game. He's still working on the Medusa. Should put him on like level four and a half. Oh my goodness, he's almost gonna be level five! I guess he did steal a creep camp of zombies. Well, that paid off. Wow. Just a few gobos to kill and he's good. Maybe even worker kills to just get that remaining XP done. This is not too much. So Primo got, he's got concentration. He's got double death resilience. Double brute force. It's for Vic. Uh, he put one point into Soul Transformation, one into Brute Force and one into Plague Field, but the fight is on. So let's see what happens here. Ooh, that's a great Soul Explosion right there on all of the Scoundrel. And I think the next one might be on the way. I don't think Vic actually got himself any Fire Orbs, nope. But there are Spiders, there are Infies, and they are pretty good at dealing with the Scoundrel anyway, so... Guess that's the order of the day. Uh, Esprimo is getting a fair amount of iron done. 
The good thing about these cheap iron mines is... Although, you know, when you get two of them, it's the same as the normal one for the other races, but... Uh, you can get them one at a time, and that allows for granularity. They're quickly filled up, they're quickly made. Doesn't take long for you to have the resources, and then suddenly you have a ton of iron. And you can spend all of that on the hunters, which are ready to go. And Esprimo just queued them up. He's also getting some sector upgrades for further iron mines. It's already pre-building them. And time to shop. It's just potions. Shield wouldn't be the worst idea. Maybe shield and ring. Shield and armor, okay. What do you guys think? Is the ring with the 5% block chance better than the... Probably not. Definitely not. Although... Yeah, definitely not. Because it's 10%, right? So... You buy the armor, not the ring. Oi! Is that hunter gonna go down? Oh, no. Yes, the spider. The spider grabs it. Oh, man, that one nibble. <laughs> Wow, I I feel so brain dead. I, I spent so many games actually getting the ring instead of that armor. Wow. Well, I'm glad I'm casting because it makes me use my brain instead of my uh, sleeper harass, so... <laughs> Next time I can automate that process. How many hunters is that? Five right now? Um... Stream is a little bit in the negative, but uh, that's because he's actually got the hunter skewed and they're not yet paid for. There's gonna be a few more now. There's the level 5. Oh, the spider pull is nice. They're all gonna bleed. They're surrounded by the gobos and they're dead. It's gonna be sleepers from Vic. He's getting a bunch of iron mines. This is a fortified apples now. Not for the fortress yet. And I don't really think he wants to engage here before Soul Shield anyways. Uh, sleep... Sleepers will need... Oh, what? Sleeper and Plague Beetle. Okay, so... Vic is interested in the full-on tier 2 fight. Spending a lot of iron on this, of course. Uh, this iron mine has been upgraded because I guess he didn't have a lot of wood, but he had some stone. Large iron mine here, too. Primo has so much food. At this point, dude just slammed the war hotkey a few times. I, I would say probably. Okay, we got the sleepers. And there are three of them. There's two beetles, and that's the first set of souls going to Vic Spire. Should be right there. That's not a shopping trip. Hey, Esprimo could sell the focus potions though for something useful. Might be like not worth too much, but you can get like two extra potions for that. Right? Oh no. Probably not. Just the one. That wasn't doing work. Getting a scaling post for losing one scoundrel is actually such a good exchange here. And even if it had been upgraded, I think he would have gotten it. But at the same time, Vic is not going to be idle. He's hurt a bunch of buildings. Killed a bunch of workers. It's two plague beetles at the moment. Uh, three, four now. It's four now. They train actually pretty fast, like, what's the train time here? 25. Yeah, that's very nice. Jolcon, thank you very much for... Hasn't used...
released the social the single time yet. Trocon just subscribed. Really not looking to get into that fight. And understandable, he's a little bit actually down in population. So for upgrades, we've got uh, the Plague Beetle upgrade first and the Sleeper one next. Now, the funny thing with that is, uh, is that it costs actually more souls to upgrade the Infectious Poison than it does to upgrade the Whirling Blades. But if you're chasing like single units and picking off reinforcements, that would do a lot. Uh, and the Sleepers could still do the harassment play, right? Like just get in those Iron Mine areas and do the work. Two of them can one tap a worker. And due to the bleeding, they even outlast the... Uh, they, they even outdo what the worker HP upgrade does. So you need two levels of upgrade there. Uh, that play beetle is absolutely toast. They're so, so fragile. <laughs> Oh man. Stream has started his upgrades. Yeah, he's had the Blood Forge for a while, I've seen that. So he's got level 2 upgrade, uh, level 2 attack upgrades. He's got uh, level 2 armor on the way. Zerk Steel. Everything's a fortified outpost, so soon he'll be starting to think about going... Wait, he is tier 3! He is tier 3, so that's really nice for him. He started working on Ash Collection. He's got two bases for it already, so that's more than enough. And soon he'll be able to add Shamans, already doing a few Brutes as well. Shamans have not yet been upgraded. He also needs the Shaman Hut itself. It's not a lot of sleepers. The Weakening is hitting most of that army though. So yeah, Vic is doing pretty great there. Populations are very even, but those are hunters we're looking at. And mostly against infiltrators. Uh, I don't know about that. I, I think I think Esprimo should be getting ahead here, but it doesn't look like it's the case just yet. Sleepers managed to tank most of that in the fight. Vic gets away mostly uns unscathed while all of the gobbles are dead to all of the splash damage. This is actually a great way to fight orcs, it seems. Shame that Esprimo never maxed out. That could have been a very different fight at max population. And yeah, the Guardian Lord tanked a lot of that damage. I'm pretty sure that Soul Shield was on during the fight. Now we're looking at 12 Plague Beetles and 12 Sleepers. Uh, 10 Plague Beetles and 12 Sleepers. A lot of Infiltrators behind this as well. Not too many Spideys. Solid army. Solid army for sure. Uh, Border Fortresses are in. Capital is not yet looking to go to tier 3. It's a very expensive upgrade. You don't want to rush that thing, I think. Not anymore. Still don't have the Whirling Blades upgrade. That's a huge problem. Might have been worth to sacrifice a few Spectres even for this. Oh, actually, uh, takes a takes a beetle down, unfortunately, with the cast of the soul shield. But better that than lose the hero, right? The ideal use would be a harvester because you just get that back for free. Now, Esprimo does have a substantial amount of hunters, seventeen of them. There's a bunch of pesters, so this is probably a setup for. Uh, I, I will say it's for. Shamans, but they're still not unlocked. The upgrade is being researched right now for them to unlock, but still needs a Shaman Hut. And these totems are extremely expensive. 25, 25 each. So definitely hard to afford. Oh, well, that's scary. That is a scary army. You guys ready for the zoomed out view? Here we go. It's the only way to zoom out more in Spell for free. You follow an air unit. Oh, was that like a, a blast from a totem? I think it was. Pretty much missed, unfortunately, for S Primo. But he is hitting this border fortress and. I don't know if Vic actually has a teleport. He does, but he doesn't want to rush it. 
I guess the repair is good enough against pierce damage. You need a lot of scoundrel to 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 get the melee damage in. Vic is full population and the Supreme was 140. Uh, that is usually the other way around. Not like this. Uh, there's a lot of Scions being made and Vic is feeling confident enough to add Basilisk. Understandable. There's a lot of sleepers already, so Frontline is more than solid enough. Uh, farm transition has begun for Vic. The upgrade for the science is done too. And the tarantula upgrade is next. Pretty good job disengaging as soon as the hunter even dares to look at this army. I like the drummers in there. Some moral support. Farm switch has happened for Esprimo too. Orcs hunt really fast, so all that hunt will be gone quickly. So a bunch of fortified outposts, right? Oh, not just this one. Everything else is border fortress, so that's great for us, Primo. Here has got Xerix Steel free. Locked and loaded are the tribe totems. He's probably been using his black ash for this. As uh, there's nothing really else to spend it on right now. Uh, shamans will be available soon. They are pretty much going to cost just food and black ash. Oh, the hero died while I wasn't looking. This fight 3 just got started and just as quickly it's also going to end. When you have that many beetles, infiltrators and sleepers, sniping a hero is going to be no problem at all. Especially combining it with the weakening uh, that uh, sacrifices can do. We've got a first try there, out. Yoshis are in town. And that's only a whole lot of free resources for the Dark Elves. And we've been able to build whatever they want after this. And as Primo does give up the first game, goes to Wick. Orange Dark Elves! Vic! Guardian of Nor! It's Primo! Purple Dwarves! Hi Hierophant! We're in for some fun! See what they do for skills. The usual. I mean, what else are you gonna do, right? So explosion and debilitating blow every time. Hi, our friend is getting a scatter shot, getting totem of flames, and the brute force taking a lot of damage from those zombos, though. Uh, what I'd recommend for people playing this map is send your uh, send your scout here and pull back and then kill those. That's easy. Or you can even do it with the zombies. I don't know. Uh, th the better creep path definitely is this because what the Supremo is doing is good because it allows him to get to the north fast. There's a godstone up here that you can't see yet. But meanwhile, Vic is like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this godstone in the middle. And you know what? He might still get to the north faster. Although he's skipping all the creeps, so he's not going to have the levels. And that might mean that Esprimo gets the level 5 timing on him. Uh, free spectating is a little bit weird on hard rock. It doesn't reveal the map, so 
Uh, you, you, you reveal the map as the player's scout. Which is why I like to follow a certain player's perspective, but I also kind of want to see what both are doing. Oh, is he going to go after the main? Like, this is where all the stonecutters are, so... Oh, Vic Tamport's back. I really thought he would go to hit that. I mean, that's probably a good thing in terms of the game lasting <laughs> a little bit longer, right? If, if the dwarves get hit early on and bullied a little bit too hard, I think they're going to be in trouble in general. But it can be done, you know, especially if you if you don't get harassed. It's doable, but Vic is really tough. I'm curious what he's got cooked up here. So for Esprimo, he's got Stonehall in the north. So it might be one of those uh, two Stonehall push timings, but we'll see, we'll see. So Primo is stealing some of the creeps at least. There's hope. He's going back to deal with his own stuff now. And after that, if he takes the revenants, he'll be level 5. So that's pretty much the dream situation here. Ah, uh, but Vic has stolen this one. Which is rough. Where's the wood for... Primo? Okay, he's got a char burner right here. So the dwarfies are cutting the wood. I'll retarget that totem. Doubt it's gonna kill the scouting post. Oh, the hero's gonna come over. Okay. Guess they're just gonna chase the Hierophant. Uh, little does this Primo know, this is taken. Can go after the hunters, but that's about it. And yeah, getting this stone pole with, with like spiders and hero and all that around is not gonna be the easiest. Also, did you guys know that the Guardian of Noor can use debilitating blow on the fire totem and it dies instantly? No need to take all that damage, basically. Oh god. Oh god. Every time the Hierophant gets hit, it's just brutal. Well, the melee heroes have more health, they have more resistances. It's just a huge difference. Look at that. 500 hit points extra. Now, can Vic take the sector or will the Hierophant nuke it down? There hasn't been any Axial there so far. There's one up there. Primo will have to get something going fast. Oh god. Yeah, he can't stick around here. Sold himself way weak. For sure. Uh, Primo still has a little bit of potions left, but... Yeah, it's rough stuff. Having to run into all these spiders as well, while the Spectre is bullying. Ay 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 ay. And Vic is just taking away every single flag there is. Spanish also don't have any negative magic resist, so... The Fire Totem doesn't do that much damage against them. 35 per shot. Vic didn't make a... He's, he's tier 2. He's already tier 2. 6 minutes. Definitely very early. He's starting to pull these creeps. Or Esprimo did that actually to him. Yeah, I think Vic should leave this alone now. Just go home and take the creeps. 
still have three healing potions. It's good enough. Oh, he's got to deal with both at the same time, but I guess he's in XP range of that anyway, so it's not too bad. It's not that far away. It's actually crazy how huge the experience range is. But that's mostly because of campaign, right? Because if your party is separated, you still want that to count. There's gonna be a lot of potions that Vic gets out of all these skellies. And then it gets worse because he has his own side of stuff too. Hall of Pain here. Uh, have there been any iron mines? Just the one here. Let's not break this because it's maybe a little bit too close to the base. Hey, can you actually reach from a tower that you built here? Can you reach from there to the stone cutter? I bet you can't, but has anyone tried that? Smells like level 5 to me. Maybe not. But if Vic steals some XP here, it might well be. Oh god, oh god! That Hierophant. I don't think there's potions. Gotta go. Gotta go fast. Yeah, good teleport for a Supremo for sure. He does have a lot of money, so I, I do think it's time to buy the tier 3 weapon and some potions. Because this is not happening. Vic is going to start upgrading all these sectors now. Oh, these creeps are still going. <laughs> it's a YOLO fan? True. Well, that's a substantial amount of axe healers to be honest so not gonna be easy to hold even with the guardian of lore and maybe with mass upgrades on this sector Vic does have the resources for it to be honest guardian might be able to hold it that's actually insane if he does and there's a sleeper there is a sleeper are you joking me yeah that is really tough for a primo i think he might be having trouble to take this down. Okay, Vic is a negative wood, so maybe the repair isn't gonna hold, but he's done a lot of damage to these axe healers already, so even though that's minus a base, this army is halfway toast already. I think, I think that this hero can chase that. Yeah, this is a good situation for Vic to be in. Sucks about the uh, Iron Mines, of course, for him, but I mean, that, that looks like a potential hero kill. Sleepers do so much damage. Yep, there's the slap and there's the level 5. Uh, curious what he picks up next, probably. Soul Explosion level 2. I'm not sure if Primo can stay in this game much longer. There's still a Soul Explosion 1. There's a Plague Field picked up. And actually, uh, Vic did not yet go for the level 5 stuff. Okay, now we did something. Soul Explosion 2 and Soul Shield have been picked. So this Guardian of Nora is not going anywhere anytime soon. He's going to get this base upgraded actually. That's what he's doing. Oh, and meanwhile the base is like, yeah, we're gonna clear creeps for you. So is this. So I guess just go back there. Sleepers are really changing this game now. And this Primo does have some good resources for wood and stone, but really lacks on the food department. Without tier 2, he won't be able to build farms. Is that tier 2? Capital is tier 2, right? Uh, yes. Yes.
Yeah, he's got iron mine economy set up and stuff. And fortified apples somewhere, so... It's not too bad. Maybe that higher fence can be better equipped now as well. Nine potions. Oh, there's the heal level two. Gives the sleepers immune to afflictions for 10 seconds. You cannot slow them, you cannot weaken them, you can't do anything. And they just murder that hero, absolutely murder. Again, range heroes, no resistances against strike damage. These guys do 100 strike. So 13 hit, sorry, 14 hits and that's it. So you need 14 sleepers to insta-kill a uh, ranged hero without armor. And that's that, as Primo has been knocked out of the tournament, Vic emerges victorious. Ho oh, ho ho ho. Moves on to the next round. We'll see him there.